We are all about facts, not fear, and providing info to keep you and your loved ones safe. So as COVID-19 cases surge in young people all across the U.S., there is a controversial idea among some parts of the community that say it might be better for young people to get infected with the virus so they can get it over with and ultimately have immunity from it. it reminds me of like those chicken pock parties, mm -hmm. right? So we have seen this before with young people having COVID parties. I didn't know about this. Dr. Pyle Coley joins us live. Before we get, hey doc, before we get to viewer questions, uh, can you break this down? Is there any scientific merit to this idea? There is absolutely no scientific merit, and it's actually a very dangerous idea, Sam, so I'm really glad that we're talking about it today. So let's talk about the reasons uh, why people think this might work and why it's actually dangerous. So the first is an individual level reason. So a lot of people say, I'm gonna go out and catch it, get it over with, and that way I'm immune and I don't have to worry about it. That's an extremely risky thing to do because we don't know that catching the infection actually confers immunity on a long-term level. And you're exposing yourself not only to the risk of the infection, but also the potential complications that could occur. So definitely not a good idea. The second reason is the argument that you're helping the group out by creating something called herd immunity faster. So herd immunity, if you recall, is the concept that if enough people come down with the infection, it actually slows the spread of the infection because they're immune from the infection. But the problem with this concept is for this kind of a virus, you have to have at least 60% of the population immune to the infection in order for herd immunity to kick. In. So if you think about the United States, that means that one million people have to get infected every single week for the next three and a half years before we're going to achieve that herd immunity target. So that's definitely not a good idea to do this for that reason. And then finally, if you asked me, do you want to get sick today, Dr. Coley, or do you want to get sick in six months? I would say definitely in six months because today we got nothing in our toolbox. We have remdesivir, which shortens the duration of illness, and that's about it. We have no other treatment. Whereas in six months, I expect we're going to have a lot more treatments available. So if you want to catch the virus, now's not the time to do it. So I definitely advise against this strategy. I'm so glad you clarified that. I hope everybody heard her, please. Uh, so let's get to viewer comments. We ran out of time yesterday before answering these questions about being in public spaces this summer. So Molly asks, my family is road tripping for the fourth and we'll have to stop at gas stations, restaurants. What should we always keep in mind while on the road? So Molly, I love road trips too. And the most important thing is to understand the science of the spread of the virus. So remember, it spreads more efficiently in indoor spaces, 19 times more than outdoor spaces. It spreads with person-to-person -person contact and it spreads with contact with surfaces. So when you're stopped at the gas station, you wanna avoid the convenience store, take your snacks with you so that you're avoiding that indoor space. You wanna pump the gas with some kind of a barrier protection, a paper towel or a napkin or something on the gas pump. And then when you're stopping at restaurants, you wanna think about sitting outside, sitting in the corner, trying not to touch the menu if you can help it. And if you're carrying out, remember that packaging could be infected. So you really want to sanitize your hands often while you're eating and consuming food when you're on the road. Well, Ashton wants to know, will, free, will extreme heat or freezing extend the life of droplets or will they only live a certain period of time depending on the material? No, we actually know that the virus is very sensitive to temperature and spreads most efficiently in the cold and dry climates. Mm -hmm. But we also know, as we're seeing now, that it can spread in hot and humid weather. Now, extreme heat has actually been shown to inactivate the virus. But interestingly enough, we don't yet know whether extreme cold temperature, so freezing the virus, whether that kills it or not. Oh, yeah, yeah, so much information. It changes daily. Thank goodness we have Dr. Coley on our side to always break it down. We appreciate you. You will be back tomorrow. Uh, DBL Nation, if you have questions about coronavirus, you want answered by Dr. Coley, write us on social media. You can also email info at dailyblastlive.com.